Hey everyone, Andrew Chelman here with MachineScales.com. If you like this tutorial, make sure to subscribe on YouTube and then stay tuned on the website so you're updated to future videos. In this video, I'll be going over the hardware step sequencer, and I'll be working with the mid-size machine, but it's also applicable for the micro and the studio. I encourage you to apply some of these concepts to the hardware that you're working with. Alright, so first thing we want to enter into step mode. And on this hardware, the step mode is located in the top left corner. Just press the button up here. And you can see that the screen's changed to reflect that mode. You have some parameters that we will be working with in a little bit. But first of all, I just want to get an idea of what the step mode is actually doing. So I'm just going to press the play button here. So you can see that this little pad moves across the 16 pad array. And you can kind of think of that as the time cursor in the software. However, rather than just being continuous movement, these 16 pads correspond to 16 different sort of sections that we can place notes in in the pattern. So basically you can think of these as 16th notes. And by pressing any of these pads, you can enter in a note at that specific place. So let's start entering some notes. The first thing you want to do is select the sound that you want to work with. So you can do that by using the select button here. You can press any pad here to select the sound of your group. And I'll be working with my kick drum over here. Now, once we have that ready to go, we can just press in the notes. You can see in the right screen that there's some meters up there and they show the velocity of every note that you entered in. Now the neat thing about the step mode is that the velocity corresponds to however hard you press the pad. So if I just want to um, enter in some loud notes, you can do it just like that. If the velocity sensitivity becomes annoying, you can just select fixed velocity up here change the velocity with the knob, and enter in your notes with the same velocity. And you can see that the meters again reflect that change, so everything is the exact same velocity. So for now I'm just going to leave the kick drum playing on the quarter notes of my pattern. What I'm going to do now is select a different sound of my group. So I'm going to use the select button here, and then move over to my clap. I'm going to enter this in on the pads here. Sort of a basic drum pattern going there. I'll take off fixed velocity and then use the um, velocity sensitivity to enter in sort of a ghost note at the end there. And again, you can be very creative, just press a whole bunch of pads. It's nice because you have very dynamic control over your patterns, and along with that you have very nice visual feedback to see what your patterns are sounding like. Again, once you have one sound sounding like you want it to, you can go over and maybe select a different one. Another nice feature of the step sequencer is it's able to change the pitch. And you can do that using this third knob here with the bass key. Now if you want to see what that's actually doing, you can exit step mode and then go into keyboard mode for your desired sound. So you can see that it's actually playing different pitches of that sample. And that's very nice for drum samples, maybe some snail rolls or something like that. It's also very handy for melodic instruments. And I'll move on to that now and show you how we can do that. So I'm going to go back into step mode and on my group B here I have a bass. So I'm going to maybe enter in a little bass line here. Alright, so 
there we go. You can use the base key feature to uh, create a little baseline or something like that. Now, if your one bar pattern gets a little bit boring, you can lengthen it and maybe change some parts of it. So I'm gonna go back to my group A here, my drum group. And then you can see there's this double button up here. So if you press this, that's just going to basically copy the first half of your pattern, double it in length, and then exactly duplicate it to the second half. So right now we can't actually tell a difference just because it sounds exactly the same. But using the buttons up here, we can scroll to the second half of the pattern. Now these pads reflect that change, and we can sort of um, just make things a little bit more varied. So now that our pattern is two bars long, it won't actually fit on the 16 pads. But if we want to see the whole pattern, we can change our step size. And do that, press the grid button here, and then select um, 1 8th. If we exit that, you can see that the lit up pad moves a little bit slower, but you also have the full two bar pattern located on the 16 pads. And that makes sense because now our step size is an eighth note, so we can have 16 eighth notes to make up two bars. But if our step size is back at 1 16th, we're going to require two 16 pad arrays, a total of 32 pads. And if you even want to go to a smaller, a smaller step size, you can do that. You can see how quickly the pad moves. But you also need a total of four pages to get all those notes in the step sequencer. But it's nice because you can get some, some really uh, fast notes going here. That sounds pretty awful here, but you get the idea if you want to work with that. Okay, so I hope this video gives you some encouragement and hopefully some inspiration to start using the step sequencer on your machine. If you have any questions or any comments, you can leave them below and I'll get back to you as soon as I can. As always, thanks for watching. Stay tuned for the next one.